hey, I'm trying a different angle, a different uh, bizarre, messy background in a different corner of the apartment, the Airbnb today. Uh, already regretting it. It looks very dark from this angle on my screen, but I'll try and make this short because my Chromebook, which is all I have to work off of really since I didn't plan on ever doing any writing or any video creation or anything when I when I bought this Chromebook last year. It's it's quitting. It's um, it's locking up. It's restarting randomly a lot. I think it's a mechanical issue, whatever you call a hardware issue, because it makes kind of a whirring noise sometimes. So, you know, it's like a $200 Chromebook um, would have liked it for it to last more than a year. I'm in Albania, which is not a, a really a great place if you have other opportunities. If you have other options, it's not a real great place to go shopping for computers. But I'll be in Madrid starting in October, so I may have to look into buying a different computer, different laptop. I really wanted to get another Mac, a, a high quality Mac. I wanted this to last for a couple of years, and then when I settled someplace. Uh, on a more regular basis to get a, a, a high quality laptop. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, I wanted to make a reaction video to my last video. This is Bookless Pete reacts to Bookless Pete. One of the great things about YouTube, BookTube, is getting comments from viewers, of course, and also when people uh, find a video you do interesting enough that it inspires them to make their own videos, which a couple people have done on my book review quandary video. Uh, David Novak was the first to do reaction video. His, his, I'll link to these. I'll try and I'm sure I'll remember to link to these. David Novak reads poetry, did a fantastic video where he reads a terrible review he got at one at one point uh, very entertaining video he drinks a lot of coffee on it so that in itself is very entertaining I, I really love his video so I was very flattered that he did a, a pretty substantial video on this and also I want to thank Steve Donahue who did a reaction video to my video and to David's video and another video by Criminali that's unrelated with his friend Sam which is which is one of my favorite team ups when he has his friend Sam over. They're both book reviewers. They have marvelous insights. I think people are pretty, you know, anybody watching this probably watches those already. So it's just so delightful for a small channel like mine to to see other people uh, discuss ideas. That, to see other people inspired to discuss ideas based on what they said, and usually bring up much more uh, erudite and intelligent uh, wealth of information to whatever the subject was so but I did want to uh, clarify a couple things because when I make my videos I never think about what I'm gonna say I mean I think about it but I never get very far and I start to make notes but then I can't read my notes and so I never quite remember if I made all the points and I also uh, took have read uh, the comments that people left on my video. It's one of my most popular videos, which is not saying much, but it's, you know, uh, 10 or 12 comments, something like that. Very helpful comments, very supportive comments, as, as always. And I think I'm going to, just to let people know, I think I'm going to do what I said I would do with this person's uh, request to, to write an honest review on Amazon and then and that'll go up on August October 20 uh, October 19th and I'll do a link to it um, here I won't do a video I'm not gonna do a video on this on this guy's book um, what I, what I clarified in my mind with, though and this is, is very helpful to hear these other discussions is I've got to remember uh, first of all what annoyed me about the whole setup was that I fell for it in the first place. It was just dumb of me to uh, agree to uh, to do a review in exchange to, to promise to do a review even though it was just like a you know an informal kind of thing. Uh, so now I, I, I have to do work because 
I, I don't know if people probably don't remember now or they never watched my early videos where I talked about uh, why I started a channel. One of the reasons was I wanted to talk about books, of course, and I wanted to share my opinions on books. And I originally started, thought about doing a substack or just a blog, and I, thought, I don't want to do all that writing because I'm very, very lazy. So I thought, I'll just blab on, uh, which is a lot easier than writing because writing you have to go back over and spell check and see if your words made sense. And I, I don't have the ability to do any of that with video because I'm not able to edit or anything like that. So uh, I'm just upset that I agreed to do an Amazon review of a book that I didn't want to do a review on just to get a dumb free copy. So lesson learned, but I will go ahead and do it. What I found very valuable in the discussion between Sam and Steve was that, you know, and, and they're coming from a, a, a professional point of view, but I, I, I'm going to really try and keep it. I, I know I've got to keep my resentment of the whole situation out of the review and just focus on my resentment of having to read the book on its own terms, uh, which I didn't like very much. So I'll put some, there'll be some positive things I can say in that review. I can, you know, I'll definitely make the point that I, I this is not my kind of book. Uh, And when I read a book like this, because this, uh, this is a book written by someone who does a lot of writing teaching. I think I mentioned that in my last review. I'm not, I'm not my last video. I'm, I'm not really sure. This is another issue that I didn't bring up at the time, but there's one way I read a book is as... I read a book by someone who counts themselves as a teacher of writing is whether they adhere to their own standards or not. And another way to review a book, the more common way and more acceptable way is whether it works on its own, whether it works on its own uh, merit or not. And I'm going to try and focus on that and try and as much as possible leave aside my my opinions about this guy's phil philosophy of composition, that kind of stuff, if that makes sense. I don't think it does. So that'll come out in October 19th because he wants all, all his reviews to come out, you know, in, in a big smash on Amazon on the day that his, his book drops. I predict that the, that the reviews are going to be overwhelmingly positive. Uh, just because of the audience he reached out to, which is fans of his channel. And something I saw in comments on, on another, uh, in another venue where somebody was like, praising the book and some other people agreed, and I was like, what are you people talking about? Uh, so that's, that's good, good for him. I think his book will do pretty well. I think it'll, you know... It'll, it'll be whatever it is, and it, it'll be my penance to have to go ahead and do it because I said I would. And it'll be good for me to kind of put my thoughts down in a more formal setting. Because as Steve often, Steve down here often talks about, and I agree with him, you know, most channels, and it's certainly the way I approach my channel, is not doing formal book reviews. I just like to talk about my sort of general impressions of the book, and I don't have any strict guidelines of how I talk about a book on my channel and I don't know if other people do or not either. Sometimes I'll just comment on one aspect of the book if I think something, you know, sometimes I'll go deeply into the plot, sometimes I won't. Sometimes I'll just talk about the, my relationship of reading a particular author or a particular genre. And I'll try and, and so this will be a good exercise for me to really discuss this guy's novel, his story, how well he accomplished what he set out to do, which I think that is one thing I'll, I'll be able to be very positive about the book. I think he set out, I think he did what he set out to do. He ended up writing and publishing the kind of book that he really set out to do. So maybe that's the best praise of all, and maybe that's more important 
for people to know going in to approach it rather than whether I personally liked it because, you know, it's not like I have a lot of Amazon reviews. I don't know if I've ever done any Amazon reviews because I'm kind of against the whole, the whole, uh, as I've said in other videos, I'm kind of against the whole culture of Amazon reviewing where it's really all about the star reviews. It's all about the stars. Um, and not about the substance of the written reviews. And and I guess that's natural because not everybody's a natural writer and people do want to give their opinion on books. But just looking at the stars really doesn't tell you much. A, a one-star review could be really good. A, a one-star review from Idiot could be a, a, a really good thing and a, and a five-star review from a moron could be a really bad thing for sales, I guess. Uh, I know it's all about the algorithm, really. So that, uh, you know, the, the most important thing is to have a lot of reviews. The second most important thing is to have mostly favorable reviews. I think I read some statistic recently where uh, if you have higher than average three and a half star reviews, you're in good shape. And if you have over 20 reviews, I think this is what this person said, and who knows? It's just another self-publishing channel I watch as I try and re-familiarize myself with that whole landscape, which I have been out of since 2017. Seems like back then it was like, hey, you need 10 reviews. Don't worry if they're good or bad. You know, to sort of, sort of uh, uh, goose the algorithm. I believe this more recent video I saw I said you need 20 reviews. Uh, you're hoping to get above three and a half stars average which seems low to me I, but I'm a, I'm a generous star giver because I really think everything below four stars just means crap uh, it just, psychologically that's what it looks like to me it's like you know there's there's five there's a, there's a row of five stars and two and a half are filled in. That seems like crap to me. Um, I didn't mean to go on that much about this. I've got some uh, some garbology, some garb August stuff I read. I haven't read garbology. I'd like to read that at some point. I don't think I'm going to get to it this month. Um, I'm excited for people that have had stories in that, and it seems to be doing pretty well, and people are, are very pleased with that anthology, but I haven't really thought that far ahead about it, but maybe for next year. Everything's going well. Another little subject. What time is it? 13 minutes? I can make this an odds and ends video. Another uh, subject I watched a lot of info on this week was the Neil Gaiman situation. Which is another weird little quandary for me because I don't like, I've never liked his work. And this, in, in my mind, a way is kind of related to the, the review quandary I had in that I don't want to, as myself, give way to my impulses to be mean-spirited and snarky and... and uh, and that kind of thing when there's so many great things to praise on a channel but it is awfully fun to get snarky Sch schadenfreude is fun i'm trying to resist that in terms of neil gaiman i have some videos in the past where i complained a lot about american gods and all my problems with that book and my problems with his writing in general going all the way back people have been telling me my whole life to read neil gaiman you know, back to the stupid Sandman books. You, oh, you like comics? You got to read this, and then it's, you know, it's like some hipster poser guy, and um, some some half sister of his death or something, and they're just hanging around being artsy, and never really got it. I understand. I I I think what Gaiman has is like a very strong sense of. Uh, imagery maybe you know not a very strong story still telling sense i think his, his stories are very superficial and the reason i'm bearing this in the back end of another video is i was have resisted the urge to go 
Ah, Neil Gaiman sucks. He's a terrible person. I always knew it. Fuck him. Fuck his terrible books. Now he's going to suffer. And I don't really mind that so much. I don't give a fuck about him. But I am trying to be mindful of the fact that he hurt real people. Got a possible cough. He has real victims, and I'm convinced of their stories. A lot of people say, oh, you know, it's all bullshit or whatever, and they don't believe any Me Too situation. Um, I do believe these women because of, um, you know, the evidence, the, the two women that were um, employees of his that he exploited, that he essayed, that he got NDAs, non disclosure agreements from, Apparently looks awfully like from his ex-wife's uh, posts, Amanda Palmer's post, that she's uh, under an NDA too, just from the cryptic kind of thing she's posted in her sort of artsy-fartsy way um, that she can't really talk about some of the things that went on. I've watched, there's a couple different uh, YouTubers I've watched about Neil Gaiman. One was a hardcore Neil Gaiman fan who initially started out very skeptical of the reports. Uh, you know, a lot of the early discussion about this controversy it was really more in terms of attacking the podcast that exposed this as being sensationalist and clickbaity and I don't know about that because I didn't listen to that but then that person sort of came around you know did their own research and came around to the fact that these these allegations seem pretty credible and there's other fans that um, that came forward too so it's up to like five people I think and on the other side there's a guy named uh, John De La Rose which is a he's a a, a right wing sci-fi guy who really hates the mainstream science fiction community, maybe for good reason. I can't really speak to his to his individual complaints, but he comes from a very right-wing perspective. So watching both his reviews, which, of course, he's very gleeful about it because, you know, Neil Gaiman is a male feminist and a... And a, a left-wing coded progressive person who yet again like Josh Whedon and many many other male fem feminists turns out to be uh, just a very convenient act to uh, to exploit groupies and exploit your employees it happens a lot but I do want to say to people that that enjoy Gaiman's work that you know I'm, I'm sorry that you're going through some Sorry, I'm sorry that you have to go through this. I'm sorry for his victims. And and uh, you know, for myself, again, I, I'm just trying to resist the, the being too gleeful about it because uh, he's a writer whose work I don't like. You know, there's certainly been writers in the past whose work I have liked that have, uh, who are turned out not to be the best people or who, uh, have done things or been accused of things that, that I wish they hadn't have been. So I understand what that's like. It's, it's tough. It's a tough decision for people to have to go through to, where to continue to read his books. I'm, as an outsider in it, I'm be interested to see how this affects Gaiman's critical reputation in the future. Will people start to see other aspects of his books that they didn't see before? Or maybe it's it's not there, you know, you, it's very, I think people have a hard time with it. Wrapping their, wrapping their eye, wrapping their mind around the idea that somebody could write books that are whatever, sensitive and thoughtful and humanistic and generous and kind, and that that could only be one part of their personality. We're all... People are very complex. You don't really know people just from their work, I don't believe. People can hide a lot of themselves. Remember that movie, uh, that Jack Nicholson movie, As Good As It Gets, where he's a writer, and he writes these sensitive, 
stories about uh, women's inner lives and and it's not a, it's not a perfect example because he becomes reformed at the end but he's actually an awful person and you know and, and he really hates women at least through most of the story of course he gets redeemed by his love of Helen Hunt and it's just kind of a stupid movie in the end but you know he's actually an awful person but he can write in a style that's not that 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 or he writes only with using one aspect of his personality that does not include those that, that his misogyny or anything like that so you know that's something to think about it's never good to idealize these people but it is difficult sometimes it's a it's a bigger issue now than it's ever been i think you know there's a lot of people on social media that I follow and they're usually not worth following. They're usually just saying the dumbest shit. It's, it could be people I like. It could be even them having opinions that I like, that I am in sympathy with, but you know, sometimes you just think like, just shut up. Do you really think that if you don't tell me that Trump is horrible every day that I'm not going to know? I don't like Trump. I don't need... Uh, Robert De Niro to I don't know what qualifies Robert De Niro to hold press conferences to complain about Donald Trump but he, I guess in his mind he feels like if he doesn't do everything he can to complain about Trump constantly that people aren't going to know that we're too dumb that we need to be guided by Stephen King and Jack Nicholson or Jack, not Jack Nicholson Stephen King, Robert De Niro, George K, Rob Reiner you know if they're not there, you know, holding, you know, reminding us every day that Trump is going to uh, cancel the election or whatever. I wish I hadn't got off on this. And these are all people that I'm in sympathy with, their opinions, and I, I realize people want to be able to give their opinion, but at a certain point, I think, just give it a rest. Celebrities, please just give it a rest. And and so I'm very suspicious of people. I'm just naturally suspicious of people. I'm naturally suspicious of people who are always in the media telling you about their good values. And that's and Neil Gaiman is one of those people. He always has been. He's always been out there. You know exactly where he stands politically. Uh, and a shocker of shockers, just like Josh Whedon, it's all an act. And that's where we are. So uh, I try never to think about what kind of person a writer is. I don't look forward to meeting writers or, or, or anything like that. Most of the, most of the writers I read are, are pretty old or dead or will be dead soon anyway. That's just the kind of stuff I like. I like older stuff because I'm old. I'm a curmudgeon don't really think there's that much being written today that is that appeals to me I'm more like a pre 1980s guy uh, you know I, I've tried to keep up once in a while with with newer stuff and I and I'm usually disappointed it just doesn't appeal to me that well but you know and there's some good stuff too like uh, uh, you know on the opposite end I'm the one person the one old grumpy person who likes all the new Star Trek. I think it's fine. I can understand why people would hate it. I can I can see the flaws in it, but I've never in my whole life of watching Star Trek ever experienced any flawless Star Trek. There's so much Star Trek that is all, it's always been a mix of, of good and bad. Even the original series, there's some terrible episodes. I thought... If I were ever going to get more into media content on this, I probably won't, but I thought I should just make a list of, I should just watch every universally acknowledged wretched episode of all the Star Treks, like like the one where Janeway and Paris become lizards and have a family uh, on Voyager, and just there's, every Star Trek has some, some really garbage episodes, and, you know, some more than others, and some of my views change over time. I don't know how I got off on Star Trek. I do have a little more Star Trek to read. Uh, I found a couple on Kindle Unlimited. Some of the newer series. Hopefully I'll get to some of that this month. Or I guess Summer of Trek goes through the end of August. Um, 
but of course I don't have to stick to these categories that much. I, there's a couple uh, events coming up. I missed some events that I'm still planning to read on. I missed Jane Austen, the Jane Austen event, but I'm still going to read Pride and Prejudice. You need a little break from junk, but there is a couple things I have on my Garbagas list to read first, so I'll be reading Pride and Prejudice. I hope to get back this fall to some of, um, some of the more ambitious, longer, older classics that I've wanted to read for a while that I've been avoiding because of concentrating on, on short genre novels to get over my my uh, 100 book challenge, which I'm almost there. In fact, I better get back to that now. So anyway, this is just uh, just a, another ramble cast because I didn't do that much reading this week. I've done a few little things, but not enough to make a whole video of. And I wanted to thank everybody for supporting my channel and uh, for engaging with my thoughts on my book review uh, quandary which I found very helpful all that advice very helpful and I enjoyed the, the reaction videos and that kind of thing very much so that's it for now and we'll uh, keep going